of faint typescript and streaky spotted pages strain the eye, but I was too intrigued to stop reading Maricha Remond Lyon's memoir. Memories of yesterdays, all of which I saw and part of which I was. Maricha saw her memoir as, who, you know this book, <laughs> as an expression of the very tender regard in which she held her. Who did she adore? Was there anyone else in the world? Her father, what was her father's name? Avril Lyons had often urged, I want you to write a book. I tried to do this myself, but never got further than the selection of a title, The Gentleman in Black. And one of the things I, I love, um, I, did, I forget which school it was, they, had, they were familiar with the book. And when I got to this part and I said, what was the father going to name his book? And they said, Men in Black. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they, 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 they know, you know, there's something. Echoes. In honoring her father's wishes, um, Richard rummaged through decades of memories and keepsakes. She sorted through, quote, the vast output of fugitive scraps of family history that have been gathering for years. And after I finished Mar Maricha's memoir, I dreamed of telling her story. Doing so would require a fair amount of detective work to connect facts, to ferret out. Because the memoir she never lived to revise and complete is the main source of information about her. But the challenge seemed absolutely worthwhile because Maricha merits remembrance. Born free in a nation stained by slavery, where free blacks had few rights and rare respect, here was a girl determined to rise, to amount to something determined to overcome. And one of the things, I mean, it was a gym that day when I just remember it, like it was yesterday, as they say, when it was probably 12 years ago, when Diana Chateaunay, at the Schomburg says, you know, there's this memoir here you might be interested in. Because that, you know, Diana's pretty cool. And so um, I just did it, and some of you have seen this. It's getting quite worn. But this is the <laughs> printout. And it was obviously, I don't know, a first draft, probably. And I mined it for everything that I thought would work for children. Because years ago, I originally wanted to do an adult book. I wanted to do a biography and do, you know, those people who do those 20 years in the making books. <laughs> and then I thought, okay. <laughs> um, in the meantime, you know, I could do a small book of her and, and save that other book for another time. So um, I think what, what drew me to her was number one, she's born in New York City, and I'm born in New York City. Um, we kind of have some parallels. It wasn't exactly, some of you know when she goes to Providence, Rhode Island, what happens to her? Yeah, and she's the only black girl in this school and it kind of reminded me when I read that story, although I do not compare myself, in the 70s when I'm one of two blacks entering a school in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And they didn't treat me as badly as people treated me richer the first year. But I thought about, oh yeah, I know what, what that's like to be the only one and to be not really wanted, like they let you in, but you know mm -hmm. some of the people's parents and some of the teachers don't want you there. Um, and it's part of the reason that I love hi history because knowing Maricha's story helped heal me because I'm like, oh, I wasn't the first person to go through it and she had it way worse than I did. No one talked to her. I mean, most of my classmates were pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So again, it's part mm -hmm. of why I think I'm, I'm doing the history in part for the children and also in part for myself. Because like I always say, I think that history can make you whole. You know, because I think we all go around confused a lot and sometimes wondering like, who am I? What is going on? Mm -hmm. uh, and we're also easily manipulated. And I always think that the antidote to that is history. That um, when you know what has happened before, you recognize it when you see it again. Mm -hmm. You know, people who know about, what was it? To hell with Spain, remember the name, to hell with Spain? Mm -hmm. You know, people who remember history, how they got um, hyped up into a war mm -hmm. for imperialism. <laughs> you know, when they see that kind of stuff again, they're the ones who say, whoa, when other people say, think it's a new thing. Um, that you believe what you're told. Um, so again, so I did this because I felt this major connection with Maricha. I love New York. Also, I did it after 9-11. Um, and I felt like I wanted to do a small story and I wanted to do a New York story. Um, and since everybody thinks that this is 
the good part. I guess I'll read the good part. So I, I tell her early life, as some of you, you know, she, you know, middle class, she has stuff. They have nice things. And she has a little um, injury at one point. She's out of school, but she goes back to school, and it's not always easy because sometimes the coach doesn't stop for her. Um, her parents uh, worked on the Underground Railroad. Um, oh, and that's the other reason that I love is I always tell kids because I find kids get excited because they say, gosh, she wasn't a slave? <laughs> I go, right, she wasn't a slave, but that's, I mean, that's a big deal, a big deal for her family, but I try to tell the kids, that's like being left or right-handed. You don't get points for not having been enslaved, but you get points for what you did with your freedom. And I try to point them towards that to say, do you understand that her, she wasn't enslaved, her parents weren't enslaved, as far as I know, her grandmother wasn't enslaved. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have that history, but yet they allowed their home to be a station on the Underground Railroad. And now, what was the penalty for that? What did, what did they face? What could have happened to them? Well, after the future slip, I think they were in prison. They could have been fined. They could have lost all their property. They, 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 they could have, you know, financial ruin. Yeah, and everything. And, every, and they laid on the lines for people that they didn't know. And probably, because you could tell that Marincha was, you know, she's very Victorian and she probably was a little snooty. Um, the whole family probably snooty. Um, they probably didn't like those people. Can you imagine for her family, they were fine, they have pianos, they have 10 year lamps, they have, you know, rugs, uh, they have breakfast dishes and dinner dishes and all of this and, you know, and then they get some probably dark, smelly, maybe bedraggled, scarred, black folks who are literate coming in, in, in their house. I believe they did not like those people, but they were able to see beyond those individuals to a higher principle and a higher cause. Um, and I think, as a matter of fact, if you look at most of the middle class in the 19th century, the Remins, the Downings, and all of them, a lot of those people, they were, they were like I said, a lot of them were snotty. Mm -hmm. They thought they were better than a lot of people, but they were able to say, but you know what, let me put that aside to help people. Same thing in New Orleans, you know, you have that group of people, what's the name of it? They um, built schools, I don't know, they were octoroons, and they built schools, but they didn't want the brown children to go to their school, but they built a school for the brown children. So I'm like, okay, fine. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, her family had it pretty, pretty good. Um, and they could have uh, lost it all for helping people who had nothing. And I tell you, say, Maricha knew never to breathe a word about her parents' underground work, railroad work. Quote, children were taught then to neither see, hear, nor talk about the affairs in which grown-ups were concerned. Can you imagine that today? Have any of us talked to kids about that? That there was a time when children, I remember as a kid, what would they say? Her parents could be fined in prison, as Richard said, if authorities discovered that they were helping runaway slaves. All the while that Maricha kept hush-hush about her parents' heroism, she never imagined that one day she would be on the run and a refugee. This happened amid the, cat the catastrophe that hit New York City shortly after Maricha turned 15 during the sweltering days of mid-July 1863. By the summer of 1863, the Civil War was in its second year with fewer men volunteering for military service the union had decided to start drafting able-bodied white men ages 20 to 45. And at that point, I mean, there had been people around who were trying to do black regiments like on the fly on their own, but blacks were not being accepted into the uh, US Armed Forces, the Army at least. The draft was extremely unpopular. And why was it unpopular? Because, uh, people could buy their way out, which was really a key for me. I yeah, for like $300. And that was like what some people made in a year or yeah. half a year. Uh, and why also in New York was it? The Irish and black were competitive in terms of work. Yeah, because the Irish were a little low down yeah. on the totem pole. And, but, um, <clears throat> Okay, the other reason, something you talked about with the mayor. Why, why else was the, the draft unpopular? Well, because um, New York was a, a southern town. I mean, the, the, 
Yeah, yeah. A lot of New Yorkers had a lot of sympathy. Um, and again, it's that part of American history. The way I was taught, it was like everyone in the North was noble and, and for the end of slavery. And you realize how many people in the North made their money, made their wealth off of the, the bankers, the textile mills. So all of the New York, you know, New England, all over the North, you had a lot of people who, who had a vested interest.